morning and welcome to the United Church of Christ of Annapolis. I hope you, we can't take our mask off anymore even if you're up at the pulpit or at the lectern, uh, new rules. <laughs> um, you know, mask cannot be taken off at any time. So I hope, can you all hear me okay now? Is that better? Great. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and I hope 2022 will be a much better year where church has uh, been strong. We've really um, nailed it as far as all of our protocol. Um, once again, you know, the variant has gone skyrocketed, so we've had new rules put in again where we ask everybody to be boosted, to be vaxxed, to wear your mask at all times so we can be safe. We don't want to have to close our church down again. Um, and hopefully all the people online will be, um, you know, enjoying the service. Um, I do would like to let you know that the council will be meeting on Tuesday to approve a new interim pastor, which we're very excited about. So if you haven't got your pledges in, we hope you will because we really need to know um, what our threshold is for, for uh, being able to have a new pastor in. We're very excited about her and more information will be coming after this. So anyway, have a great service and thank you for being here. The grace and peace of Christ be with you. Today we celebrate the second Sunday after Christmas, a time when the church learned that the word is God. My name is Sandy Picard and I'm grateful to worship with you, church, on this day. I am especially grateful to be here today to start this new year, this prosperous 2022, and look forward to putting the pandemic behind us. Let us pause for a moment and be present in this space. Let us in silence reflect on the truth of how we feel in body and spirit in this moment. We will take two to three breaths silently. God has called us together today in worship. Let us give that call voice in our call to worship. Arise, shine, for the Lord has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Like sages from afar, come and behold your Christ. Let us fall on our knees in his honor. Let us lift our voices in praise of his name. The peace of the Lord be with you. Also. Share a sign of peace with each other by commenting on the live stream page or send a text to someone or shout peace to the world. Peace. 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 Gloria, 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 in excelsis Deo. Good Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born today. Call the one he calls you all to gain the everlasting hope. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. 
wise men, right? Thank you. They are wise men, magi, okay? And what did they do? Do you know their story at all? They followed the star to Bethlehem, and um, they had camels. They had camels. They came from the east, and they followed a star to Bethlehem, and they were looking for somebody very special because they were kings. And they brought gifts. Do you know what gifts they brought? Gold. Gold. Frankincense is something that you burn and it smells very, very nice. I know what gold is. I don't know what frankincense or and myrrh is, but I have heard of them and I know about them, except I just didn't know what they are. Well, thank you very much. Very good. Myrrh is like an oil, and frankincense is something that you burn and it smells very, very good, like an incense. It's very, very nice. So they were bringing these gifts because they thought they were going to meet a new king. Guess who they met? Who is? Uh, now, Epiphany every year, January the 6th, is when we celebrate these guys coming to see Jesus, following the star to Bethlehem, and they found Jesus. Okay, would you hold this for a minute? I would like you to look around the church and tell me where you think today we might find Jesus. Look around the church. When people first come to church, usually when they're babies, they find Jesus where? Come on in. What is this? This is a place babies get baptized. So the first time you meet Jesus in your life, usually as a child, is when you get baptized. Where else do you think we might find Jesus today? Show me. The candles. You can bring the star because we're following the star today to find Jesus. So we're going to put the star right up here for a minute, okay? And that's where we're going to find Jesus. Where else do you think we might find Jesus today? What am I going to do after I'm finished with you? What do you think I'm going to do after you're finished here? What do I do today? I'm probably going to talk. <laughs> I'm going to read the scriptures with Sandy, and we're going to then talk about the scriptures. And sometimes when you listen to the scriptures and you talk about it, who do you find? Jesus. That's the whole point of doing that. And after we finish all of that, we're going to come up here and we have bread and we have wine and we're going to have Holy Communion. What does that mean? I don't know. Sure you do. Take a wild guess. Um. When you eat the bread and drink from the cup, who are you receiving? Jesus. So we can hold a star right up here too. Uh -uh. But I remember it from Easter. That's right. Better forget it. Well, you listen very carefully because we're going to do it this morning. That's another good place. Where else do you think we might find Jesus? Come here, follow me. I'm going to give you the suggestions here. Would you hold a star right up here? Hold it right up here. What does this lady do? And she does what? helps these people sing. So when we sing about Jesus, who do you think we find? Jesus. Jesus. So we can hold a star right here. That's another place where we can find Jesus, okay? Okay, now look out here. Look at these people. Do you think we can find Jesus anyplace out here? 
Show me. Take the star and show me. We're following the star. We're going to find Jesus. Show me Jesus. Where can we find Jesus here? Where's your family? Take the star right to him. Hold it over them. Because that's where we can find Jesus too. The first place you're going to learn about Jesus is in your family. And everybody else around here, all of these people who gather here every Sunday, that's where we find Jesus in each other. Okay? So that is what we're talking about today. Following the star. Following the star, because that's where we're going to find Jesus. Now, my last point, if you'll hold this one more minute. Up here like the funeral. There you go. Thank you very much. We're going to find Jesus today by following you and your good example and your life. Everything you do should help to point to Jesus. Okay? Thank you, Bob, for coming up here and being with me. now let us pray the words that Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of our hopes, Christ of our faith, spirit in our hearts, we come to worship you with joy and gladness. Your goodness knows no limits of generation or gender or condition or citizenship. You are kind to all, and we worship you in all sincerity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God's forgiveness, let us in silence confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the pain of the world. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God. In the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. Listen now in the reading of Scripture. 
for the word and wisdom of God. We open our hearts to the word and wisdom of God. Our first reading today is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 13 through four, or th 3 through 14 in the New Revised Standard Version. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us on, in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the, minist the, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who are the, the first set, who, who were to first set our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you all, in him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption and God's own people to the praise of his glory. Our gospel text today is taken from John beginning at the in the first chapter beginning at verse 1 through 18. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace and upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, he is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending, he of the things that are that have been and that future years shall be evermore and evermore. Thrice to be with God the Father and the Holy Ghost to thee, him and chant and high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be. Honor, glory, and dominion, and eternal victory, evermore and evermore. the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. The scriptures today continue the celebration of Christmas, the great gift of God coming into the world to be one with us. The Gospel of John, as you hear, takes on a totally different way of approaching that theme. Mark, Matthew, and Luke, the synoptic authors, all begin in a different place. For instance, Mark begins with the adult Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth and the baptism in the Jordan. Matthew and Luke begin with the Annunciation to Mary and the conception and the story of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. But John doesn't go there at all. John goes back to the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. This is one of the most beautiful and profound texts in the entirety of Scripture. It goes back to speak about what God intended from the beginning. Oftentimes we wonder what is in God's mind. What does God think about? And here John is laying it out for you. And it is beautifully echoed in the words of Paul when he was writing to the church in Ephesus. God wants to show us from the beginning of the beginnings his immense, overwhelming love. God has chosen us, chosen us, called us by name. God has adopted us, has given us redemption, forgiveness of sin. God has given us eternal life, all of us. And this text from John, while it may be a rather difficult read, is something we should take and read on a regular basis. If you want to know what God has in mind. And read the Ephesians as well, because Paul spells it out even further than John. God's everlasting overwhelming love for us. It was in Jesus that all things came into being. Jesus existed with God because Jesus is God. All things came into being through him. And without him, nothing came to be. 
and the word became flesh. God loved us so much that he wanted to be one with us. He took on our very human nature, our flesh. Everything that you do, everything that you experience, every joy, every sorrow, every sickness, all your health, this COVID, all of it, God has experienced with us in our flesh. God is not a distant, faraway, transcendent God. God is imminent. God is here. That's why I was demonstrating with the children. We only need to follow the star and we'll find Jesus. And the star will lead us to each and every one of us, to everything we do. If we do it for and in and through Jesus, we will find Jesus. That's the glory of Christmas. That's the joy. Today is the follow-up to New Year's, so I want to wish everybody here a very happy New Year. It's a time when you take stock, you look back, and you look forward. And I was saying a little while ago, if today, going through all that we're going through, is the worst of the year, maybe we're going to have a pretty good year. We need to be one with each other right now, but not people without hope, not people without faith, knowing that Jesus is with us, experiencing all of this with us, being with us. And Paul goes on to show us the trajectory. If you want to know what is in God's mind, reread that letter, that section of that letter to the church in Ephesus. Read it carefully, digest it, because it shows that God wants us to be with him forever. He shared our human life so that we could share his divine life. That's the most extraordinary thing of all. One day, we shall all be together in a place where we are sharing and visibly seeing divine life, participating in it, enjoying it, living life as God lives life. God has given us this great, great gift, and it is for us to share it. And so I gave the kids a little star to remind them that they too are supposed to point the way point the way to Jesus by the way they live, by the way they speak, by the courage they show, by the absolute confidence and trust that they have in Jesus. So I wish all of you a very happy new year. We are in the beginning. It's an interesting phrase that John used. It was the very first words in the Bible. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning was the word. Now in this year, we are at the beginning again, knowing that God is fully at work in our midst, creating life, creating joy, creating redemption and salvation for us all. Every Sunday, this church is here, gathered to worship and observe the Sabbath. But church is more than what we do within these walls. It is a calling to the greater mission to meet people where they are and to embrace the new thing that God calls each of us into. Whatever that call may be for you and for this church, we thank you for all the ways that you support this church in time, talent, and money. Please feel free to give digitally through our website or by leaving a retiring offering in the offering plates as you exit after the service. 
also, if, if, if you are in a place of urgent need due to, due to the coronavirus, please contact a member of the staff to make use of the Deacon's Relief Fund, which we have set aside. Thank you for all your gifts and your giving. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain made low, and the crooked made straight, and the rough places played, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it, Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain made low, and the crooked straight, and the rough places plain, and all flesh shall see it together for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, revealed, and the flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Oh, God from whom all blessings flow, praise Christ all creatures here below, praise Holy Spirit evermore, one God in three whom we adore, Amen. Friends, excuse me, friends we share our prayers of hope and concern together, confident that God listens to our prayers and calls us together in response. We invite you to share these prayers now by raising your hand in the sanctuary and sharing them after being called or by commenting on the YouTube page. After each prayer, we say, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'd like prayers for the council um, on Tuesday to make the uh, massive decision on um, the new interim call, and we pray that this will be the right person for us and that um, we will receive this person with grace and love. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. I want to pray for the caregivers and respite care and for those of us who are in caregiving positions that we know that we support each other and that we're there for each other and it can be a long, hard, difficult road, but God in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for Jesse Brogan. He has some more treatments, chemo, this Tuesday. And Rick prays prayer of gratitude for all nature's gifts. Christ in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, also prayers for the teachers that are going back to school tomorrow, um, the students that are going back, and 
for uh, the employees who have to go back. Um, luckily, I'm not one of them. I get to still work from home, but prayers for the students and the faculty and for the Department of Health for keeping us. We thank you, Martin, for all you do for us. God, in your grace and mercy, Friends, we now pause in silence to hold these prayers which we have not given voice to today. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. Let us now conclude our prayer with a prayer for peace, saying, O loving God, spirit of hope and peace, lead us from death to life, lead us from falsehood to truth, Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust. Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace. Amen, amen, alleluia.
guests at your table, come to us wherever we go and be present in all that we do. Let us pray together. We have come to the Lord's table. We have eaten the bread of heaven. The Holy Spirit will transform us from within so that we can see with Jesus' eyes, hear with Jesus' ears, speak with Jesus' mouth, feel the world as Jesus feels. We taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's only child Jesus may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore amen